There was no place in the United States you couldn't go that hadn't been touched in one way or another by the drug trade. It was a war that we weren't really winning at the time. So cocaine and marijuana started coming out of uh, Colombia, and they were bringing it by boat and by airplane. And then my aviation skills were uh, extremely important because in the early 70s, that was the primary method of bringing narcotics into the U.S. Cocaine trafficking w was very profitable. They had unlimited resources. On a daily basis, we were putting our life on the line. I don't think it ever crossed my mind that it would be dangerous. I was uh, young and invisible. I'd been on the job for about 13 years. I was confident in my ability to do the job. When I talked to the Bogota office, they said that they had information that Rene Vadinas, uh, a fugitive from a uh, cocaine arrest in the United States, might be staying at the hotel. Went to bed probably 11 o'clock or so. We were both asleep when I heard somebody pounding on Charlie's door. Every time they knocked, they were getting more insistent, more aggressive. And he finally said, uh, we're, I'm gonna have to open my door. They said they're gonna shoot it down. And that's how the uh, Colombians dealt with, with problems. You eliminate the problem. Life was very cheap. From, from the moment that he entered the hotel room, you could tell that Rene Benitez was the guy who was going to be calling the shots. When he stands there with the pistol drawn, I knew we were in serious trouble. He had his finger on the trigger all this time, and, and the safety was off. All you have to take is just flinch a little bit. And with that level of danger, it does change you. And here we are together trying to work this out as partners and confronting death. With the adrenaline and everything, you get tunnel vision. I was trying to find a way out. How are we going to escape? And I didn't want to escape and leave Kelly hanging. You have a partner and you take care of each other, you have each other's back. But what basically drives you at that situation is the desire to survive. And it's amazing what you can do, what the body can do when you get into survival mode. When a miracle happens, you don't really look back at the, and question why you did what or why you did that. And when you confront those life-threatening situations and you survive, there's bonds that are created that are like no other bonds.